In this video, we've got $10,000, $5,000, $1,000 grants, grants for everyone. And a couple of you have been reporting to me that you've been making progress in obtaining grants that I've listed in my spreadsheet that link to information resources and applications to grants for everyone. For instance, my man, Send Captures, I'll post a link to his YouTube channel in the pin top comment just told me that this morning he received an email from GoFundMe reading that they've just approved his $500 grant after, and this is a key detail that I had missed. I didn't know about this. He actually told me about this. You have to have five people donate to your GoFundMe campaign and they will match up to $500 of the donations that you were able to secure through that campaign. So you get $500 from five people that make donations to your GoFundMe campaign and GoFundMe will match that $500 by granting an additional $500, making it a $1,000 grant. And my man, Send Capture, just told me that GoFundMe approved this grant today. Now, what do you have to do to be eligible to receive this grant? All you have to do is operate a small business. Do not click the back button as yet. Let me explain to you. Just as just as I have done throughout these previous videos. You simply have to have a small business. You don't have to have the business. The business did not have to be in operation in February 2020. That's one of the qualifications for you to receive a Paycheck Protection Program loan. For GoFundMe, you do not have to do that. You simply have to post a campaign where you're raising funds for your small business that you could start today. And once you raise $500, from five people, then they'll match that. Or you raise more, whatever the amount that you raise, plus the $500, that essentially becomes your grant. Because if you don't have to pay it back unless you told people, listen, I gotta just put the $500 in and I'll pay that back just so they can match it, then you've got a $500 grant. Regardless, it's still a grant for everyone. Who can't start a small business? It is simple. I'll give you the same example, and I'll go ahead and do it again because I'm gonna show you something. It's gonna blow your head. It's gonna push your wig back. Be as simple as selling this Bob Ross bobblehead doll that I bought in Marshalls for $6.99. I'm not even gonna tell you which Marshalls so I can keep this idea to myself. Now, hit the Marshalls in Elmont, New York State, that's in Long Island, and hopefully they have a few. I'm actually smacking myself silly because I didn't buy more of these, because take a look. Let me just show you real quick. There's just one way that you could sell on eBay. You first go ahead and click on sold items right here to the left when you perform a search for something that you want to sell. Completed items, just click sold items, and you'll get a list of all the sold items. I went ahead and typed in Bob Ross bobblehead, right? And take a look. Look how much it's selling for. I paid $6.99 for this thing. Sold January 19th for $15.99, free shipping. Okay, you make a few bucks. Look at this, brand new for $15.10, $5.16. Look, and it's open. This one's not even, this thing's got the seal. It's got that plastic thing. I haven't even peeled it off yet. $12.49, buy it now, plus $7.75 shipping. With as popular as this guy is, <clears throat> I can't believe I didn't buy more of these things. Look at this, just pimp slap myself. Anyway, look, this is it right here. Where, where else is the another one? $9.99 plus free shipping, made a couple of bucks off of it potentially. If you bought it at $6.99, perhaps you got it cheaper. Take a look, there's one that I saw over here, it was like 20 bucks or whatever. The dude made like, let me see if I can find it. $10.99 plus free shipping, here it goes, look. $22, $22, and look, and it's open. Because how else did he take a picture of it? I don't see a pic, well there's a picture right here, but I'm not sure if he's using the, unless he found a picture of it online. However, this is a seal on a $22 plus free shipment. There's one that I saw where the dude paid like 20 bucks and 50 cents. And the, the, the purchaser bought the shipping for it too. Click the subscribe button and click the bell notification to stay on top of all these grant and free information resources that I encounter. They're making money off of this. Imagine if I hold this thing for a year. I'm 90% sure that this thing is gonna go for $20, $30, $40, potentially $100. I remember I took a look at one of the older Transformers Prime 
Transformer action figures that I purchased for my son back when he was in preschool. I just took a look at it recently. It's like $100 for each one. I think I paid like 20 bucks for it. So it's as easy as that. Look, I'll just show you a quick example of how what we've done over here. I've got a business with my 13-year-old son and my 10-year-old son. And I gave them a monitor for Christmas a couple of years ago. They said, we don't want it. We want Transformers. So we went ahead and listed it. We made 89 bucks off of it. We delivered it to the person right to his doorstep in Elmhurst, I believe, or I believe it was in Glendale or one of these neighborhoods close to Middle Village out in Queens. 89 bucks. Now he's using that money to go ahead and buy Transformers and he's filming stop motion Transformer videos with it. And once he grows the YouTube channel to which he's going to upload these videos, he'll start generating revenue. So he takes the money and he invests it. He reinvests it. It's in its infancy, nonetheless, He's making money. That's a small business right there. That's what the Small Business Administration refers to as a non-employer firm. I showed you this profile. If you've watched my previous video several times, there are 25.7 million non-employer firms out of 31.7 million small businesses, which constitute 99.9% .9 of all business in the United States employing 60.6 million U.S. workers, half of the U.S. workforce. And the majority of these small businesses are non-employer firms. These are businesses that do not have any other employees but the person who operates it, non-employer firms. And that's what you can do today. I mean, perhaps you got the revenue to start with several employees. You could start that today. And remember, I told you about this grant right here on the spreadsheet that I'm about to tell you about in a few. The NAV Small Business Grant. Remember I told you, this thing is coming again. They open it up every quarter. It is open, open on January 19th. The, this round closes on March 8th and a winner announced on 2021. This is a grant of $10,000 and $5,000 for the runner up. Again, you do not have to show that your business was in operation in February, it's not even asking for any type of documentation. They just want the story. How do you craft the story? You go ahead and structure it by taking a look at the past winners, all right? Che Butter Jones, if I'm not mistaken, he's from Jamaica, Queens, baby. Same place I'm from, same place 50 Cent is from, right here, yeah. South Jamaica, Queens, South Suicide, Queens, ladies and gentlemen, 134th and Guy R. Brewer to be exact. Queens is the my, my most diverse place. Queens is the home to hip hop artist Nyes. Was it Nicki Minaj? She's from, she's from out there. Anyway, Che Butter Jones wins ten thousand dollar grant. They sell food. Here are other examples. These are the types of stories that people share, and they win this thing. You got to study it. Meet Junk Star Handcrafted Furniture. I guess they take junk and they handcraft furniture off of it. There's all kinds of business ideas. Meet Three Trade Club. It's easy. I saw a lady the other day on my way to the barber shop and she's selling empanadas and coffee out of her back trunk. That's how we do it. You want to get ideas to make quick money? Visit a third world country. Visit Barranquilla, Colombia. Bar en Barranquilla me quedo, baby. There's people out there. They, there's one guy. I'll give you an example. The sewage system is not that good out in Colombia. So when it rains, it rains pretty heavily and it's still like a rainforest out there. And you've got like a stream of water that runs along the sidewalks and they make the sidewalks tall. So when these streets flood, they don't flood the homes that are on top of these sidewalks. So this stream of water, even after it stops raining, it'll continue to run along the side of those sidewalks. So what they'll do is they'll place a tire, a rubber tire, where on the dry spot of the street, without letting people get, without obstructing traffic, and they'll place a plank, a wooden plank, on top of the sidewalk and the tire, and then just walk people off, walk people along the plank. And people will give them money for it. Give them one. There's an application. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure if it's still in operation, however, but they were doing this, they've been doing this for decades, potentially centuries out in Colombia, where 
you could actually hire someone to stand in line for you. Remember when people used to wait outside the Apple store all night, used to camp out to buy the first iPhone? Well, there's an application, there, there was an application that I read about a couple of years ago where you can actually hire somebody to do that for you. They do that in Colombia all the time. They've been doing that for decades. People go out there, sometimes homeless people, they'll stand in line five o'clock in the morning and they'll sell their spot. So there's all kinds of business ideas. There's a crazy amount of business ideas that I have in my head. And for these ideas, you've got, like I said, we can refer back to the spreadsheet. I've updated, I've updated it to 2021.2. And you remember the American Seed Fund. Right now, it's still to, to be determined when they're going to open it up again. But again, it's grants of up to $1.75 million to commercialize your technically risky idea. The internet, Doppler radar, tissue generation, I believe inkjet printers, all these innovation, all these innovative ideas were funded through the American Seed Fund. So if you have an innovative idea, you don't have to have a business. You simply have to have the idea. You submit a pitch. Then if they accept your pitch and allow you to take the next step in the application process, then you will have to open up your legal entity, go to your department of state, Go ahead and file for incorporation. I only paid a buck twenty-five, if I'm not mistaken, to the state of Florida to incorporate my business to get an employee identification number to the IRS is free. I have listed all those resources where you can find out how to do all these things on the small business resources tab of this spreadsheet and all these organizations that'll walk you through it. CDFIs, they get funded by the federal government, community development financial institutions, List of CDFIs, America uh, Small Business Development Centers, the USA Guide to Start Your Own Business. I've linked you to all of this. And one viewer actually asked me about this stuff, about assistance to partner with a farm. We've got resources here for USDA for grants and loans, beginning farmers and ranchers loans. And I think this is ideal for what she's trying to do. Let me see if I could just pull up a screen real quick with it. Right here, so if you're just starting off and you are a farmer, I know a number of you, you, I mean, I don't deal with farms, I just found this resource, it's coming from the federal government, and when it comes from the federal government, you can call them, and their job, it is to help you. Just like, I don't know if you saw my video where I walked everybody through the process you have to perform in order to determine whether you operate a business in a low-income community to qualify for the first round, or the next round, rather, of economic injury disaster loan grants of $10,000, well, that was through census.gov. I learned through the employees there. I give them a call and they told me, so do not hesitate. You know, don't be scared of jumping on the phone with these people. They can't smack you over the phone. Not, the worst they can happen is tell you no, or at best they can refer you to a place where can help you, can take you to the next step of applicating, of applying for grants or growing your small business. But don't do the small business. Don't operate a small business just to get this grant funding. Do it to save and feed your families. It's a way to get cash money, to put money in your pocket, to ensure that you're always funded, that you always have an idea, and you're not reliant. You gotta think about it. When you are an employee, you're a business, period. You operate a small business as soon as you come to this planet. Because even if you go to school for four, five, seven years or whatever, you're an employee of an organization, you're essentially basically a non-employer firm you're just receiving w-2 employee income so the only problem is in that particular case is that you only have one client whereas if you operate a small business a legitimate a legitimate small business you have several clients as many clients as you want you want three clients you want ten so if one of them fires you you have three left you have five left you have ten left one left you only have two clients whereas if your boss fires you and you're simply a W-2 employee, you're done. You gotta start updating that resume all over again. The sales process begins. You acquiring a job is just another sales process. The only thing is when you become an employee, that's actually the easiest, you know, you become an employee, as I told you before, you're only making one sale. Whereas when you operate a business, you gotta make several sales, which is good and it's more secure. It's risky to be an employee. These are just some of the things that I've sold on Craigslist, and this is business revenue. Look, unused, practically new, freestanding, full swiveling TV console. My neighbor gave me this thing. It was brand new. I was like, yo, let me just throw it up on Craigslist. These are just a couple of things.
fold up gazebo box i think i paid like 60 bucks in the supermarket never used it too lazy to put it up 47 bucks i think i sold it man it, i the lady talked me down to, to 40 and these are other resources that I, i've listed this is the fearless fund i believe this the deadline for this is today yes it's today this is the deadline and i actually highlighted the row where i listed the information resource to this grant in yellow so you want to apply for this today if you qualify this is for black owned businesses and even if you don't operate a business i've got grants for you look at this this has nothing to do with the business as long as you have an idea that will help us get through the pandemic this is open to all canadian and united states residents you can put together a team and you can apply for a grant of up to twenty five of twenty five thousand dollars i think it's up to twenty five thousand dollars twenty five thousand dollars and the application deadline is january 30th 2021 You've got the Beyonce $5,000 grant, people facing foreclosures and evictions. This is not for businesses. I'm telling you, when I say grants for everyone, grants for everyone. I don't play that. Unemployment Benefit Center. This is under the Individuals tab of my spreadsheet. You want to find information resources to apply for unemployment in Maryland. You go ahead and look, click Maryland. You go to Michigan. Search. And it'll give you results for Michigan, my home state, New York, New York, bang! There you go. All of these places that'll give you assistance on how to apply for unemployment. This is probably the easiest place that I found to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program loan. I went ahead and applied for that. It qualifies as a grant because as long as you use it to pay yourself, then it's forgivable. That's basically 100%. And even if you don't use the whole amount of money, if you use up to 60, at least 60% of the amount of money that for which you qualify, that's 2.5 months of payroll expenses, then, and use the rest for eligible expenses, it becomes a grant, essentially. And this is the easiest place. You just simply have to show that you operated a business in February 2020 by uploading a business bank statement. And then you have to show like an invoice, something proving that you generated business revenue in 2019. Not everybody qualifies for this. However, even if you're an independent contract, you don't have to have an LLC. If you've got independent, because one of the documents, one of the examples of the documents that you have to upload to substantiate that you generated business revenue in 2019 is an invoice. Let's say you invoice somebody. A thousand bucks to build them a website. If you want to build websites for people, you don't even have to know how to do it. You simply go to a website such as upwork.com and you go ahead and hire somebody from another country. Some people, they charge as low as five, six, seven dollars an hour. Have them build a website for you. You sell it for a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks or whatever. Pay three, four, five hundred dollars or whatever the case may be. The difference is profit. That's money. That's business revenue. You, sub you put that and listen, disasters pandemics, hurricanes, they're all coming. They're, that's practically guaranteed. So if you begin now, if you begin now, you're gonna qualify for a lot more programs in the future. Start a small business if you get nothing else from this conversation. If you have a way to present data, geological data, the federal government's got money for you right here. And this, I don't even know if this is I didn't read whether you have to have a business, but for a number of these programs, just like the American Seed Fund, you don't have to have a business when you're first inquiring, but by the time that they allow you to take the next step in the application process, then you have to have the business and you have to register with Sam. Another viewer passes to me. Her name escapes me right now. I'll try to look it up and post it on a screen. And this is basically the Sailor Academy, free resources on the free education tab. So there's all kinds of, for instance, there's a public speaking class, all kinds of college level courses, and it's all for free. So you want to improve your skills. Like I told you, getting money is easy as long as you have the information to do so. And the information is there. Go to the free education sources. You want to learn how to code. You want to learn how to do artificial intelligence, how to do rocket science. A lot of people say, I say it sometimes. It's not rocket science. If you want to learn how to do rocket science, the source is there. Nothing is stopping you. Listen. Don't sleep on the human brain. Don't sell me a dream I don't sleep. If you're facing eviction, go ahead and visit this right here. This is justshelter.org. You can just go ahead and they'll, the search results will link you to organizations that'll help you with eviction problems. So this is in New York. Let's say you're in Oklahoma. 
click go. Legal aid services of Oklahoma. Let's say you're in Texas, click go. All these organizations that'll help you out with your eviction problems. These are a couple of guides to determine whether you are eligible for some grants. There are grants for individuals listed on grants.gov. So I've got a guide here that shows you how to navigate through that process. This is the registration. Now, one quick tip. You may want to register as a business, even if you're just starting your business today, because if you have an account as an individual on grants.gov, they'll only let you apply for grants that are for individuals. But if you do it for business, then you could apply for both, I believe. Or perhaps you, you want to have two profiles. It doesn't really matter. It's all free. These are all information resources that explain to you how to, how to apply for grants through grants.gov and elsewhere. If you need housing help, there's the there's National Council for home, home Housing Assistance, I believe. So all these organizations in all 50 states right here, Kentucky, Minnesota, Nebraska, New York City, Ohio, South Dakota, Washington State, Wyoming, Someone told me that I didn't add enough resources for veterans. So now we have a veterans tab, okay? And we got a couple more resources. I'm gonna make this a lot more robust in future videos. So click the subscribe button, click the bell notification, stay on top of all these free resources and grant applications that I encounter. All right, if just in case you don't know, I, I've said this in a couple of videos, a number of people who've been watching me from the jump know this. If you are a United States veteran, you can obtain a no-fee personal checking account with Chase. Okay? A number of pe veterans don't even know about that. I didn't know about it until I walked in one day and I told, I got to know the the manager at my local Chase and he told and I was telling him, oh yeah I served he's like oh really like you shouldn't be paying any kind of fees for anything like you get money orders for free you get with the certified checks everything for which you have to pay a fee you don't have to pay it if you're a veteran over at Chase as a veteran you don't pay the business service fee to become a coach with Beach Body you can find the information resources and applications to these grants for everyone at bit.ly slash grants, that's plural, G-R-A-N-T-S, 212.